I'm so upset. I'm so sorry that this is mean. This is just not to my personal taste, just not to my very specific personal taste. Mm, so I have read this book. For the record, I like Paul Tremblay. I have read a number of his books. And this is probably my least favorite book of the year. So what is this book about? Nothing, nothing. This book is about nothing. It is not horror. It's not thriller. It is general fiction coming of age friendship with maybe a slight supernatural paranormal element to it. Um, the friendship is not entertaining and there is no plot to this. It is three or two hundred and something, two or three, two hundred and seventy odd pages of nothing happening. Let's reflect on the back of the book, which lied to me about what this book was about. What the coolest girl you've ever met decides to be your friend? She's not the coolest person you've ever met. And their friendship is weak, barely takes place over the summer. What kind of grand friendship these two had? I don't know. I don't want to say she's not cool because she's the only good element of this book, though. We'll get to her later. Er, Barbara was not cool. That is true. He was a whiny, long-winded narrator with so pretentious thoughts, and I hate it being in his head for the entirety of this book. Uh, he was a 17 year old high school loner in the late eighties who listened to hair metal, true. Had to wear a monstrous back brace at night for scoliosis, also true. Started an extracurricular club for volunteer pallbearers at the poorly attended funerals. This is also true. However, it is a footnote in this book. The pallbearers club, uh, he starts it for a way for extracurricular to get into college. And that's about it. It's where he meets Mercy, the other main character in this book, and his so-called best friend. But that's it. it. There's nothing else about the club. It's barely even mentioned afterwards. Like, it's maybe 10% of this book. There's... Oh, my God. But his new friend thought the Paul Bears Club was cool. Sort of. And she brought along her Polaroid camera to take pictures of the corpses. She, like, what? Three pictures maybe uh okay that part was a bit weird it was weird uh so her obsessive knowledge of a notorious bit of new england folklore that involved digging up the dead now when i first read that i figured it'd be like oh is she interested in digging up the dead or are we sneaking into the funeral hood uh, funeral home afterwards to i don't know do something i'm thinking frankenstein okay i love frankenstein no no, she's interested in the history of like the witches in the area who they would dig up the corpses in the past and look for signs of like life after death that like the fingernail still growing, the hair still growing. So history in that sense. So a slight interest in vampires, very mild. They write a book report, not a book report, they write a history paper on vampires. That's about it. And there were other strange things, terrifying things that happened when she was around. Lie. Usually at night, but she was his friend, so it was okay, right? Yeah, he gets sick. A pre-existing condition that he already has based on his scoliosis. Some aggravated symptoms occur during his life that happened to be around the same time he met this friend. Decades later, yes, decades. This entire book spans his entire life and is the most boring life I have ever read. Like, if I wrote my life memoir, it'd be just as interesting as this in terms of, okay, yeah, I went to school, I graduated, I went to college, graduated from that, so at least I traveled around a bit, but this person in a band and goes on for pages about all the shitty bands he was in and why he left, and what was wrong with them, and what was wrong with him. And then there's hints of, like, a little bit of drug abuse-ish, maybe? Implied more by Mercy than anything else. Decades later, Art tries to make sense of it all by writing The Paul Bears Club, a memoir. Uh, but somehow his friend got her hands on the manuscript, and, well, she has some issues with it. I would, too. Uh, and now she's making cuts. Uh, more like annotations. Seamlessly blur blurring the lines between fiction and memoir, the supernatural and the mundane, Paul Bear's Club is an immersive, no it's not, a uh, suspenseful portrait of an unforgiving and unsettling friendship. Okay, so the only element of this book I liked was the fact that it is, it's a memoir, novel. Uh, 
following this guy's life. And his friend Mercy gets her hands on a copy of it. So she is making little annotations within the margins and she's calling out his pretentious attitude and going on about how much he rambles on about things. It's like Paul Tremblay wrote the story and then went back to critique his own writing. And I enjoyed that element of it, but I couldn't even take full advantage of it because all these little notes, it's like fun to read them on the side here. This book was so boring to me, I could not read it physically. I would have rather, I got, I would got more entertaining if I set this on fire. So I had to switch to the audio. Thankfully it was available on Scribd. I, was, I paid full price for this book. I was not going to pay for the audio too. Um, yeah, so listen to it with dual narrators, thankfully, rather than enjoy the cool writing style premise of it. I know I'm being harsh on this book. I know it's going to find its audience. Um, its audience is not for me. I, again, I appreciate the unique aspect of this book. But nothing happened. I need a plot with something driving it forward. This, some kind of push or goal or purpose for writing the book. So the purpose and goal and structure might be like, hey, is my friend a vampire? Um, but he ignores it. So he doesn't do any research into how she could be a vampire. Does, there's nothing. This guy just, it's just him going about his life and that's it. I can't give you any information about this book because nothing happens. Um, that is all I got. Uh, positive, positive aspect. Mercy is the only positive as uh, aspect of this book. Love her. Hate this Art Barbara guy so much. Hate it being in his head. Um, I got nothing. I, I'm trying to think of one positive genuinely positive aspect of this book that I personally enjoyed and I got nothing. All right. Uh, okay. Let's, let's talk positively about Paul Tremblay's previous books. Had to pull up his good reads. Okay. Um, Head Full Ghost was the first one by him I ever read. Genuinely enjoyed this. Um, it's basically a ripoff of The Exorcist, but your own personal spinoff take of it. Uh, Dual timelines where one is a girl is possessed and to pay for like the exorcism kind of thing. They go on reality TV show uh, and it's told from the point of view of the little sister. And it also cuts forward into the sister being interviewed years later about the events that happened. I did not like that time frame at all. I actually hated it. But the past timeline where the older sister was possessed was very entertaining. Um, I would have just given this a three star because I really didn't like one of the timelines, but the ending, oh my God, the ending has stuck with me so hard throughout the years. I will not forget it. It's burned into my brain. Here's a positive aspect of Paul Bear's Club. I think there is a reference to that because they mention a uh, documentary TV show and the cat's attacking the camera. Um, I think it's a reference to Head Full Ghost. So one good thing about this book. Uh, next book that I read by him was Disappearance of Devil's Rock. Keep in mind, this was a very long time ago. You cannot attack the camera. Uh, Disappearance at Devil's Rock, which was mildly annoying because teenage points of view, teenage characters are not my favorite thing about Paul Tremblay's writing. In fact, it's my least favorite thing. He, his teenage characters are very annoying, but at the same time, teenagers' thought points can be a little bit annoying to be in. This is a kid is missing, the mother and other viewpoints. Cat is going crazy. Um, overall, I really enjoyed this book. This might be my favorite by him. I enjoyed the most of it, but there wasn't very many memorable scenes in it, which is a little bit disappointing, but I do recommend this one. Cabin at the End of the World was the last book by him that I really truly loved and it was just very well done. Uh, a group of strangers show up at this cabin where these three people are, two husbands and their daughter, 
and they're like, one of you has to die to save the world. And you have to choose which one of you will be sacrificed to save the world. And it's just them trying to convince them that they're not crazy. And them trying to prove to these strangers, like, you are crazy. This doesn't make sense. And there's this little girl and she's adorable. And everyone has some history. Are they telling the truth? Are they crazy? Also very good. Negative aspect of that one being um, pop culture references. And the majority of Paul Tremblay's book, just the number of pop culture references always draw me out. There's just so many of them. But it wasn't completely overwhelming. But if I had to hear Goonies Rock one more time, I swear to God, I was going to go insane. Um, Survivor's Song. Did I hate that one more? No, I didn't. At least that one had a story. Uh, I didn't hate that one as much as this, but I still do not recommend it. Zombie Apocalypse, with the most frustrating characters, I hate it reading every second of that book, but at least I could physically read it. I, I maintain this one here, I physically couldn't read because nothing was happening. At least that one had a plot, get from point A to point B. Uh, not even going to talk about that one anymore. So anywho, I don't know if this has turned me off from Paul Tremblay altogether, I don't think I'm going to be buying his books full price anymore because I own all of these books. Um, just, I'm so upset. I'm so upset right now. This is my most, one of my most anticipated books of the year. And I physically couldn't read it. I'm so sorry that this is mean. This is just not to my personal taste, just not to my very specific personal taste. And I hope other people love it and it finds its audience. I'm sure it will. Uh, that is all I got. I will talk to you later.